Hey guys, in this video I'm going to tell you Dr. Bruce Lipton's top five ways to stay healthy, which I know is a super important topic right now, and I really was interested in Dr. Lipton's opinion about this because he has such a unique and forward-thinking view on health in general. Now, if you don't know who Dr. Bruce Lipton is, he is a biologist, formerly a medical school professor, and he's one of the early pioneers in the science of epigenetics, which is all about how the environment shapes the way that the genes express themselves, which is something that he expresses in his very popular book called the biology of belief. Now, I read his book recently, I've been watching a lot of his videos, and I wanted to make this video for you to condense it all down into five practical steps that you can take to keep yourself healthy. Now, you're probably listening to everybody else telling you to wash your hands 50 times a day and use hand sanitizer and never leave your house, and while there might be some truth to that, uh, the theme of this video is going to be kind of the theme of Bruce Lipton's work in general, which is that the, the typical traditionally recognized causes of disease, which I like to summarize as genes and germs, are not the only considerations. I mean, a lot of people think that everything that determines their health comes from outside them. Either they were born with certain genetics, so therefore they're, they're destined to get a certain disease, or they were exposed to certain germs and those germs are gonna cause them to get those disease. But what I wanna share with you is that regardless of the genes and regardless of the germs, you have a lot of power to, to shape your own health. And in fact, the power that you have inside of you is much greater than the circumstances of your birth or the germs that are surrounding you at all times. Okay, now the first thing that we all need to do is just stop panicking. Fear shuts down the immune system and there's a good reason for that. Fear traditionally is a response to something that's a clear and present danger. So to use Dr. Lipton's analogy, if you're standing uh, five feet away from a saber-toothed tiger, probably you're gonna have a lot of fear because there is a clear and present danger in that saber-toothed tiger. Now, if you consider that there's a saber-toothed tiger beside you and you also have a disease, you have, have germs inside your body, which, which of those two threats is the larger threat that you're gonna wanna get away from? Is it the germs or the saber-toothed tiger? Well, obviously the answer is the saber-toothed tiger. You're gonna get out of there as fast as you possibly can, and that's why we have our fear response. And what the fear response does is it shuts down every part of our body that is non-essential for getting us the heck away from that threat or for fighting that threat, as the case may be. So the immune system requires a lot of energy to work properly. You know this if you've ever been sick and you feel really tired. Well, it's because your immune system is taking up all your energy. But if you were afraid, your body's fear response takes all of the energy away from your immune system and puts it into your arms and legs so you can run or you can fight. Now, normally that's a good thing because that keeps you out of danger. But if you're constantly in fear, then it turns into a really bad thing. If you're constantly watching the news and watching all these scary images and, and listening to them, trying to cause you to panic over and over and over again because that's what the news does, that's the news's job. If you are in a constant state of fear, then you are going to be constantly shutting down your immune system and you're gonna be unable to fight any kind of disease. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to calm down, stop panicking, stop the fear, stop the sources of the fear, turn off the negativity, turn off the news, turn off Facebook if everything you see on Facebook is telling you to be afraid. Stop talking to people who are constantly pushing this fear on you or at the very least ask them to stop. Start meditating daily or start watching funny movies. Whatever it is that you have to do to get your mind off of the fear, it will pay huge dividends for your health. And by the way, um, it might not be that you're afraid of the virus, right? There's, there's a lot of other things that you could be afraid of right now. You could be afraid of the economic shutdown. You could be afraid of losing your job. You could be afraid of your business failing. Uh, you could be afraid of China taking over the world, right? There are a lot of threats that are going on uh, other than the virus itself. And even though those threats are very real, if you're afraid of them, if you're constantly running through the worst case scenarios in your minds, if you're panicking because of the economy or because of China or whatever it is, it's still gonna have the same effect on your immune system. It's still going to shut down your immune system because it doesn't matter where the fear is coming from. It doesn't matter what's the object of your fear. Uh, all that matters is that you have the fear. So you have to figure out how to shut off that fear, that chronic fear response 
that is poisoning your body. And then one of the very best things that you can do to get rid of that fear is just to face and accept your own mortality. And I know a whole bunch of you are clicking off this video now because you don't want to hear about it, but the truth is that you are going to die. And the sooner you can learn to accept that, the better your life is going to be until that point. Now, the best way to come to terms with the fact of your death is to recognize that when your body dies, you don't cease to be. Your soul lives on. And, and this is something that scientists are actually beginning to prove. Dr. Lipton says specifically that most of the tissues in your body have antenna. They are receiving a signal from outside of the body that tells them that this is my body. So your body is receiving a signal. Every cell of your body is receiving a signal. So that begs the question, are you the receiver of the signal? The body is the receiver of the signal. And of course, if you think about it, the answer is no. You are not the receiver of the signal. You are, your essence is the sender of the signal. The body is just a tool. And when the body ceases to function, when the body dies, the sender of the signal, your soul, continues to live on. So your mortality should not be something you should be afraid of. Far more important than the health of your body is the health of your soul. And kind of ironically, it's like a little joke of nature, uh, the more you disregard the health of your body in favor of the health of your soul, the more healthy your body becomes, as well as your soul. So the first thing you want to do is you want to stop panicking. The second thing you want to do is you want to avoid electromagnetic radiation as much as you can. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, if you're finding it helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up because it makes YouTube like me better. Hit, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon beside the subscribe button so you get all my future videos. And if you think that this video would be helpful for somebody else, please share it also. Now, I know avoiding radiation is not an easy thing to do. We live in a very wired world uh, where we're being bombarded by radiation from every angle at all times. I mean, unless you have the privilege of living in a remote farm somewhere, then maybe you're not subject to that. But most of us, for me particularly, I live in a condo building surrounded by other units. And so I'm getting like 50 different people's Wi-Fi beaming into my body at the same time, not to mention all the cell phone towers and all of that. And, and there's some new technology coming out too, which is looking to be a lot worse than anything that came before it, because you know, every, these tech companies care a lot about getting everything connected and getting everything on the internet and is pretty cool, but you know, you gotta consider the human health implications as well. Anyway, so there's some things that you can do to reduce the amount of radiation that you're subject to. Um, try to avoid putting your, your phone beside your head as much as possible. Try to avoid putting your phone in your pocket as much as possible. In fact, if you're not using it, try to keep the phone away from you. Um, you can turn off your Wi-Fi at night. There's a few things that you can do that you can protect yourself from getting more radiation that you need to. And I realize there's a whole bunch of radiation that you can't control. I mean, you can't like shut down the cell phone towers, but there are a lot of things that you can do to reduce the amount of radiation you're taking into your body. And by the way, please do not panic about being exposed to radiation. Yes, there's some that you can't control. Don't worry about it. Don't think about it. Um, don't worry that it's going to give you cancer any second now because that fear, that worry, is going to hurt you a lot more than the radiation itself will. So just do what you can to control the radiation and then stop thinking about it. That's the best thing that you can do. Okay, now the third way that you can keep yourself healthy, and this is probably the most obvious, is just take care of your nutrition. Eat good food. Take supplements for any nutrients that you're not getting through your food. Take vitamin C because it boosts your immune system. In one of Dr. Lipton's interviews, he was saying, you know, it's kind of funny that the people who spray the crops with pesticide have to wear hazmat suits so that they don't get this stuff on them. And yet the very stuff that they're spraying on these crops are the things that we're putting in our mouths. So if you can avoid industrially farmed foods, then your health is going to be better as a result. Okay, now the fourth thing that you can do is to control your thoughts. Stop focusing on problems. Stop focusing on things that stress you out because like fear, stress also ruins your immune system. Stress makes you unable to fight off germs and pathogens. And people are all afraid of, of coming into contact with the germs, but the truth is that you're always in contact with the germs. What really matters most is your body's ability to fight off those germs. Your body is normally very good at fighting off germs. However, we have this situation in modern society where we're constantly stressed out. 
That is not a natural situation. You're not supposed to be stressed out most of the time. You're supposed to relax so that your immune system can work at full potential. When you're stressed out, the stress hormones, like the fear hormones, will divert the energy from very necessary functions such as fighting off disease. And one of the more fascinating discoveries that Dr. Lipton made was that how your body composes itself is based on your spiritual condition, is based on where you choose to direct your thoughts. What he found out at the most basic level was that stem cells, which are the cells that become every cell of the body, they can become proteins, they become bone, they become fat, etc. These stem cells, depending on what they're immersed in, depending on the culture medium it's called, it's the stuff that they're swimming in, will turn into different kind of cells in different kinds of solutions. So what he found was that even though these cells were gen genetically identical, they became completely different kinds of cells based on the environment that they were in. And all of our stem cells are going through our blood and our blood is our culture medium. And the chemistry of our blood determines how our cells recreate themselves because we have millions of our cells are dying and being replaced every single day. So what we choose to replace them with depends on the culture medium, depends on the chemistry of the blood, and depending on what emotions are ruling your spirit will determine what the chemistry of your blood is. If your spirit is stressed, if you're constantly in a situation of stress, you will have stress chemicals, stress hormones coursing through your blood. If you are in a state of fear, you'll have fear hormones coursing through your blood, or if you're in a state of love, in a state of peace, in a state of meditation, then you will have chemicals of well-being that are determining how your body reconstitutes itself. It's very interesting if you think about the fact that you right now versus you a year ago are completely different. Your body is made of a completely different set of cells. Your body has been completely replaced. However, most of us replace our old body with a new body that's just exactly the same as the old body. And the reason for that is that we haven't changed our consciousness. We still have the same consciousness today that we had a year ago. And so that consciousness creates a carbon copy of the same body that we had a year ago, except that if we had problems a year ago, now they're even worse. So your consciousness becomes your biology. So you have got to control your consciousness. Focus on things that are positive. Fo focus on things that are edifying and your body will literally recreate itself in the image of the thoughts that are going on in your mind. So if you are under the impression that your thoughts are just like a wild animal that roams around wherever it wants, stop believing that. You have control over your thoughts and your thoughts control every facet of your life. Which brings me to the fifth way that we can stay healthy and that is just to believe that you're healthy. And this has been proven time and time again. You've probably heard of the placebo effect where somebody who takes a sugar pill but believes that it's going to heal them of an illness, they actually get healed of that illness. So it's a confirmed fact that having faith literally heals you. And if you can believe that you are healthy, you are going to be healthier. And it works the opposite way too, right? If you believe that you're gonna get sick, then you're more likely to actually get sick. Your body is very good at giving you exactly what you believe. And in fact, reality in general is pretty good at giving you what you believe in. Kind of like Henry Ford famously said, whether you believe you can or you believe you can't, you're right. Well, reality kind of gives you what you believe in. And I realize that changing your beliefs is not something that you can do but just by snapping your fingers. It has to work on a subconscious level because you have conscious beliefs and you have subconscious beliefs and your subconscious beliefs are pretty well ingrained. They're the ones that are running the show for the most part. So you have to change the subconscious beliefs and that's kind of hard to do. And I'll probably make more videos on this in the future because I don't want this video to get super long but I'll give you like the shortened version. And that is to give the belief, your desired belief, give it a base and then repeat it often. Just two steps there. So give it a base. Basically, you want it to be based on something, whether it's based on science or based on religion. You want it to conform to the things that you already believe. And I find that having faith in God is the absolute best way to do that. I believe from the depths of my being that 
God has my best interest in mind and that everything that happens in life is happening to my benefit. So that's my base. Your base might be a little different, but it's something that you can commit to, something that you can say, yes, I believe that, I have no doubt of that. And then once you have that base, then you want to repeat it often. So a good way for me to do that is to quote Bible verses about how God loves me and how God wants the best for me because the more I repeat it, the more the subconscious picks it up and that becomes a part of my being. And as a result, I truly believe that I am healthy and I become healthy on the outside as a result. So many things in life, the physical is just the outer manifestation of the spiritual. So that's all five ways. What I hope that you got out of this is that this, your spiritual health is much more powerful than your physical health. And by the way, I'm not trying to say that uh, if you're spiritually pure, then your body is never going to die. It is. Everybody has a time to die. But until that point, you're going to be a whole lot healthier than you would have been if your spirit was unhealthy. And of course, your consciousness creates your experience of reality. And this used to be something that was just in esoteric religions, but now more and more science is beginning to confirm this through epigenetics and through quantum physics, which is something that Bruce Lipton talks about a lot. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, I have a free gift for you. You, you can click the link in the description for the free cheat sheet, Eight Habits for Success, Happiness, and Spiritual Fulfillment. It's my gift to you for supporting me on YouTube. It's completely free. And if you appreciated this video, I would invite you also to check out this video where I give you a little challenge that's going to make your life a whole lot better. And of course, please hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and share.